Hey guys, Missing Pixel here. I just got myself a Steam Deck after waiting for a month, then giving up on just buying it off of a scalper. Anyway, what's the first thing you do when you buy a Steam Deck? Well, of course, you load up Windows on it and try non-Steam games. Well, that's what I did anyway, just for a bit of a laugh, just to see if I can get all Sonetta games running, all Dablex games running, all Team 6 games running, and this is basically what this video is about. I will probably make a review on the Steam Deck, but on Pocket Pixel yeah, a couple months down the line, so make sure to subscribe to that channel if you're not. Anyway, um, the first thing that I tried, of course, is London Race to Destruction Madness, and the thing is, it ran so well, it really set my expectations way too high. But yeah, no, it ran perfectly fine. I put it through Steam, which is what you have to do so that it can emulate the Xbox 360 controls on the Steam Deck. So I did that, it played just fine. Literally no problems whatsoever. It, it, this is a portable machine that can play London Rest of Destruction Madness, which already made me very happy. Unfortunately, after that, things kind of went downhill. London Race of World Challenge just lags like it does on every modern system, which is why I bought that little HP laptop to play all Devlex games. This code base is just super unoptimized and it just doesn't want to play on anything modern, so might as well just play it on the PS2 emulator. Now, surprisingly, that wasn't the main issue. The main issue is, none of the games actually want to launch on Steam Deck. Why? Well, it turns out the Steam Deck doesn't have a display scaler. It will only run at 1280x800, it will not run any lower. Maybe this is because it's a tablet display, maybe because AMD hasn't implemented um, like software scaling like it does on SteamOS and like many laptops do nowadays, I'm not sure. But the problem is, um, all of these old games want to lo launch at like 1024 by 768 and Windows won't let them because it can't physically change resolutions and they will crash. So I then got DG Voodoo, put it into all of my games, and all of them worked perfectly fine, more or less. So here is a Team 6 game to demonstrate, here's European Street Racer. Problem with this game is, it does support controllers, but you still need to use a mouse to select which race you want to go to and your car upgrades, so you do actually need to have a mouse plugged in. Though I'm sure you could probably tweak the controls in Steam Big Picture mode to let you use the touchpad as a mouse, as well as using the controller as a controller. Um, but anyway, yeah, the game ran perfectly fine, you know, smooth 60 FPS. It was pretty cool to have a Team 6 game portably, just like it's cool to play London Racer portably. I then tried um, a game called Tin Can Race by a company, I believe they're called Phenomedia, if I remember it correctly. They made the Crazy Chicken range of games, maybe you guys remember that, like Crazy Chicken Cards. Um, so I tried this game because it doesn't have any controller support, it only plays with keyboard and mouse. Now thankfully with Steam Big Picture Mode you can of course change the controller configuration and here I am using the D-pad as WSD keys and um, even the start key was mapped um, officially as the escape key. So yeah, that worked perfectly fine, I mean it's not ideal but it did work and of course you can then tweak it. The Steam Deck is extremely customizable. Now here is Crash Time 3, this is a game that I actually do have on Steam but unfortunately in Steam, it, well in Steam OS it will just, it will play but it's just a black screen and I can't change it unfortunately. So so yeah, it sucks a little bit, but on Windows it works perfectly fine and you know, smooth 60 FPS is a bit of an older game. So at 720p, yeah, it plays perfectly fine. I will probably try Crash Jam 5 at some point in the future because that's a way more demanding game, way newer. And uh, the, the, the Synetic engine is just beautiful and it's very graphically demanding. Next game I tried is Need for Speed Underground 2. Now I'm sure I could do this on SteamOS by Lutris, but I just decided to do it on the Windows route just as a proof of concept. I'm not actually playing this game at the moment, but yep, yeah, worked perfectly fine. You know, I, I loaded all the custom scripts to enable the correct native resolution. I put it up to max settings and it plays perfectly fine. Now, yes, the controls all work and I didn't need to do any sort of configuration. However, there is actually a script that lets you add like Xbox uh, button prompts and lets you use the right analog stick to move your camera around. Unfortunately, I couldn't get that script to work, it just kept throwing up errors. But, game still works perfectly fine anyway. I also tried Test Drive Unlimited 2, because that's honestly half the reason I got this console. It's a game that I'm trying to review for this channel. I intentionally didn't play this game on my laptop, because I wanted to play on a Steam Deck. So, you can imagine how annoyed I was, when every time I tried to launch the game in Windows, it would blue screen, well, black screen in Windows 11. It would black screen up death on me. Well, I don't know why, it's some sort of kernel issue. With any sort of blue screen of death of shoot, type into Google and says, please update your drivers. Yeah, AMD has only released one driver set for the Steam Deck. So I then tried to use it via the PS3 emulator, I tried to play that way, but it just kept, it would just crash trying to compile shaders. Tried to do it on the Xenia emulator, which ran for about 5 minutes, then it would crash. Speaking of Xenia, I also tried um, Project Gotham Racing 4. I had to use an older version of the emulator because the new ones crashed for some reason. And it played fine, except no audio, it would just the audio would freeze, and also the save file would get corrupted um, after you 
close the emulator and then you would never be able to get your save file back, which is great. So yeah, PS3 and Xbox 360 emulations still have a little bit of work to do, but they are making massive progress, which is amazing. I mean, Xenia just got a massive speed boost and the PlayStation emulator got a speed boost like probably a year ago or so. So at the moment, even though like for example, Forza Horizon is still not playable, there's no ground textures and it just freezes just like um, the test drive does. In a year's time, it will probably be fully playable and then we'll be able to have a Xbox 360 and PS3 in our pockets. Not literally, the Steam Deck is huge, but Anyway, Lutris came to the rescue because I managed to install Test Drive just fine and I can play it finally and I don't have to boot into Windows, I can just do it natively and I am so happy, you have no idea. I'm so happy that Lutris exists and it's got a massive community behind it. I don't have to use that garbage play on Linux that barely works and it really would annoy me. Um, yeah, I'm just really happy that I can play Test Drive. Um, and you know, it added a Steam OS shortcut and everything, and it plays buttery smooth, and controls work, it's just phenomenal. And I'm honestly very happy with just how many games I managed to get running on the Steam Deck. I mean, here's uh, Chicken Kentucky and the Next Generation Chickens being played on gyro controls. That's amazing! Just the fact that you can kind of retrofit a new way to play these games, both in terms of portably and in terms of stuff like gyro controls and, you know, being able to play on little touchpads and whatnot, is just awesome. So I didn't actually come to a, to a proper conclusion. I suppose there is no conclusion, it's just me trying out Windows games on the Steam Deck. The thing is, you could probably run a lot of these games, you know, like for example the Team 6 games and the Synetic games under Lutris. It's just something I haven't tried yet, it's just, this is more of a proof of concept, hey look, here's what you can do with the Steam Deck sort of thing, and there's a lot they can do with a Steam Deck, and I'm overall really happy with it. I will, like I say, I'll probably make a full review on it, and I, I'll test out more games in the future. Anyway, thanks so much for watching this video, and I'll see you in the next one.